Well, greetings, test takers. This is Dean Tenney. I'm coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas. We always like to add uh, little carve-outs uh, to the uh, channel. So today's little carve-out lecture, what I mean by carve-out is there are larger narrative lectures that include some of this content. Uh, but I'd like to share with you uh, what I call one way to put it in your brain housing group is that gubbies are goofy. They're just goofier than other types of security. So here we're going to be talking about U.S. government securities, T-bills, how they're goofy, how treasury notes and treasury bonds are goofy, and how uh, treasury inflation protected securities are goofy. They're just goofy in a lot of ways. So that's kind of the title. Maybe that'll help you kind of memorize some of the ways in which they're goofy. Now, I'm not doing agency securities here. Uh, there's a separate uh, carve-out lecture on Ginny May and the agencies on the channel as well. All right, so let's uh, get started. So uh, treasury bills are considered to be the risk-free rate of return. Why? Because you don't have any credit risk. It's testable to know that you don't have credit risk in U.S. Treasury securities because the U.S. government can confiscate money. They have taxing authority. Now, other governments have taxing authority, but they aren't taxing U.S. citizens. And the U.S. government can print little green pieces of paper called, uh, you know, dollars. <laughs> other governments can print money, but they can't print U.S. dollars, which is the world reserve currency. And so you don't have credit risk. Now, uh, the other type of risk you have in debt denominated securities is interest rate risk. And uh, treasury bills don't have interest rate risk either. Uh, treasury bills are uh, the highest quality money market instrument that you can have in terms of money market securities, right? Uh, other money market securities have high quality, but they're not the quality of the treasury bill. All right, so uh, let's get started on how they're goofy. Uh, all government securities trade over the counter in a negotiated quote-driven market. And so remember, that means there's going to be you know a bid and an ask or a bid and an offer, a price at which the dealer is willing to buy the treasury bonds into treasury bonds or treasury bills into inventory and a price at which they're willing to sell the T-bills or T-bonds or T-notes out of inventory. And that would be called the spread. And what I'm doing is providing liquidity in the secondary market uh, for treasuries. The uh, treasury market, the secondary market for treasury securities is the largest market. And that dwarfs, you know, the stock market, for example. Uh, T-bills are one year or less. They're issued at a discount in the primary market from the U.S. Treasury. They're quoted by the desk in the secondary at a percentage or discount from par. So that's the first way in which they're goofy. This quote looks kind of goofy as compared to other quotes. So, for example, let's just call this uh, choice D on your exam. And let's make this uh, larger. We'll call that choice D and, you know, in terms of an answer set. And we'll have some A up here. Let's give a different uh, answer set here. Uh, for example, this might be what a uh, quote of a over-the-counter stock might look like when there'd be a bid and there'd be an ask and maybe it looks like this. I'm just making this up at 15, 16, for example. And uh, maybe we have a quote of a muni and it would look like this. And maybe we have a bid and we have an offer and maybe the bid is uh, 98 and one eighth. Let's put that like this. Whoop. I wonder if you don't have any room here. Uh, by the way, it is testable to know that uh, um, corporate and mini bonds, the minimum spread a bond desk is going to make is going to be an eighth. And remember, that's one eighth of 1%, which is a bond point. So that's $1.25. If you get stuck on that, you can take your calculator. I'll just show you how to do that. You take your calculator, you take one divide by eight. And then you just times it by the bond point, which is 1% of par, and you find out that's $1.25. Anyway, so that's uh, there, and let's say that's going to be my spread there. So the minimum spread I'm going to make in that is uh, an 8. And then let's take choice C looks like this. And choice C has uh, NAV and a POP, public offering price, and that's at value. And it looks like this. So those are answer sets, uh, perhaps, on the test. I've been thinking about sometimes trying to write like a final exam that just has all the different answers and not the questions, because it depends on the question what the answer would be. So let's say, which of these is most likely the quote of a treasury bill? 
Now, you know, you can get this right with the Sesame Street trick. One of these things is not like the other. But when it dawns on you that what we're discussing here is a 2% discount from face, you know, if you don't get that, you're kind of like, well, gee, how, how am I going to make money buying it at two and selling it at one and a half? I guess I make it up in volume. But a 2% discount from face value is 98. And a one and a half percent discount from face is a 98 and a half. So indeed, it still follows that. So more often than not, in fact, you know, the way I would suggest as a test taker to approach this is usually when a customer is looking at two prices, the customer pays the high price, you know, in this answer set 16, 98 and a quarter or 10 or 98 and a half. But it, again, the quote would look different for the T-bill because it would be a discount. I don't think uh, rather than recognition, I don't think you're going to have to put this into any kind of a, you know, format like this. Just be careful. Again, the title here is goofy. And this is goofy in terms of how other things are quoted. All right, so let's uh, move on. Treasury notes and treasury bonds. So one thing that makes uh, treasury bonds and treasury notes goofy is that the minimum spread is much smaller. The minimum spread in these is going to be 30 seconds. As we said, corporates and munis trade in eights. Let me get a different color just to make that pop a little better. And then the other way you need to know that treasury uh, notes and treasury bonds are goofy is that they settle T plus one. Now, remember, that's goofy because that's not how corporates and munis settle. Corporates and munis, remember, settle T plus two. And then remember, they use an actual calendar, which is 365. And as you recall, that's not true of corporate and munis. Corporate and munis use 30-day calendars for calculating accrued interest. So that, again, that's another way in which these are goofy, which these are goofy. Uh, notes, two to 10 years, bonds more than 10. And again, what we need to be able to do is distinguish the type of quote. Again, how they're quoted is uh, different. As we just said here, they're quoted as a percentage, or excuse me, the smallest spread here would be 30 seconds. Okay, so let's look at our example of something we might have to do in terms of practical application on the test. So as you see here, the uh, desk, the uh, treasury desk, is willing to buy this into inventory at 92.08. I mean, that's important. That's 8.30 seconds. And so, boom, and willing to sell it out of our inventory at 92 and 16.30 seconds. This is quoted as a uh, discount, a discount. And it's percentage. We're going to have to figure out the price here. So be careful because if the uh, question says the customer is selling, it would be 92.08. We would per be turning into dollars. But here we're saying in the test, uh, the question says your customer is buying. So we're stipulating in the question, I'm just showing you some here, that that customer is uh, buying. Remember, they buy, customer looks at two price, pays the high price, receives the low price. So what we got to do now is turn that 1630 seconds into a quote. Now, I think 92 is easy, 92% of par. Uh, and then 1630 seconds. Again, we're going to take our calculator. We're going to take 16 divide by 32 times 10, and we find out that's five. And so what we should be prepared to do on the test is turn this into uh, 925. 920, 92% of par, five, and it's quoted in dollars, that's 925. So again, uh, they're goofy and that they have 30 seconds rather than eights. Uh, we have treasuries. We have receipts that are uh, created by broker dealers who strip the securities, strip the U.S. Treasury securities. And then we have uh, zeros that come uh, from the treasury. Uh, you don't need to know that separate trading, treasury uh, trading of res registered interest in principal <laughs> securities. Who cares? But it's just a government zero. And all zeros, by the way, remember, we have to do straight line amortization upward called accretion. And so you're going to be paying taxes on money you're not actually receiving. So that kind of sucks. Uh, they're good for somebody who wants to lock in a rate of return. They're not callable. So, you know, treasury securities are goofy and that they're not callable. So you don't have call risk in treasury securities. Uh, this is good for somebody who needs to set some of money, perhaps at some future date. And then the uh, last one we want to talk about is a tip. And let me give you about the nastiest kind of a tip question. The main thing is to know that this uh, adjusts semi-annually based on the consumer price index. So let's say that I told you, for example, it was two years 
uh, of inflation in each year was four and a half percent was what the CPI went up. And so what we're going to do now is adjust the principal uh, by that amount. So I think the easiest way to proceed is just to say, well, four and a half percent. Remember, this is just like if this was a coupon. So if the coupon on the bond was six percent. I would be expecting to get $60 and two payments of $30 each, right? Half of the 6%. And so that's important because that means in terms of the adjustment that's going to take place semi-annually, this is going to be 2.25% on that. So, you know, what I could do is I can, what I would suggest you do, by the way, you are going to get a tip question or two. I don't think you'll have to do the math, but I would, instead of, uh, you know, kind of trying to do the math here because it compounds, that's what most people miss. The idea that this number is compounding. So, you know, if it was the first uh, year, for example, I would take a thousand to see what the adjustment is going to be. And I would times it by 102.25. Oh, gee whiz. You also want to have a process here because I just caught myself that half of, oh, no, that's right. 2.25 half. I better make sure I'm doing, I don't like doing math, but boy, you really got to discipline yourself to make sure you're doing the math correctly. Yeah, 2.25. So I would times that. Let me just do it here. All right, I just, I just was verifying to myself that half of that is 2.25%. Yeah, I'm proof that you don't have to be very good at arithmetic to pass these exams. Uh, times 102.25%. And then I would uh, make that first adjustment would be 1,000 times 102.25 would be 1,022.50 would be the first adjustment. Now that compounds. So then we, you know, I would just do that again. I take the next number, this number, and times it again by the 2.102.25. I do that four times, right? Because two years means there's going to be four adjustments. Now, as I said, I like to try and come up with a hack where I can avoid doing the math. So what I would have just do is instead of compounding adjustment, I would have said, okay, uh, well, 4.5% is $45 twice, that's 1,090. And I would just shop the answer set and pick the one that was more than 1,090. So that's how I would proceed. Uh, you're definitely going to get this suitability-wise, keeps pace with inflation. So that could also be testable as well. So again, uh, kind of goofy, a little goofier than how we do other things. So that's the point of helping you try to remember how treasuries are goofy. Let's clean up our slide. Uh, taxation. Well, the uh, states and municipalities, and I'll just pick the state of New York and New York City, would like to tax me on interest I receive on treasury securities, but cannot. So they're tax exempt at the state and local level. Again, that's not true of a corporate bond. That is not true of a corporate bond. It may be true of a muni bond. Uh, the federal government, the U.S. Treasury, can and will tax you. They are taxable at the federal level. And again, that's goofy. That's different than munis, for example. The advantages are extremely safe. There's nothing safer because there's no better credit quality than that of the United States government. And therefore, they pay very low interest, you know, risk and reward is uh, connected, right? The uh, lower the risk, the lower the reward. The higher the risk, the higher the reward. So here's this nice, nice overview of the, whoa, of the direct obligations of the U.S. Treasury and uh, their book entry. Now, what book entry means, again, is goofy. There is no physical certificate. So you're confused if you buy a Treasury security and you say transfer and ship because there is nothing to transfer and ship. The U.S. government has you on the books and they'll send you the appropriate checks at the appropriate times. And so that's what book entry means. There is no physical evidence of your ownership. There is no certificate. That's what that means to say that a security is book entry. Okay, so I hope you found that little carve out helpful. Uh, remember inch by inch, your exam is a cinch. Yard by yard, your exam is hard. I'll be posting this to all the playlists in which it's an appropriate uh, topic to be tested on, which is your SIE exam your Series 7 exam, and your Series 65 exam. See you for the next installment. Bye-bye.